Well, g'day everyone. Welcome back to Creation Podcasts. This time we're going to try to answer a common skeptical objection to the Bible, which is how did kangaroos hop from Ararat to Australia? And we'll also be discussing uh, why animals are where they are. Now, my name is Dr. Jonathan Sarfati, and I'm from Australia, and with me is my colleague from another island nation of Singapore, Joel Tay. Good day. Good day to you. Uh, so why is this an issue, do you think? Why do people bring this up? What's the problem here? Well, the Bible says that after the flood, that the ark landed on the mountains of Ararat, mm -hmm. in that region. And um, so the question is, if they were there, how did they get to Australia? Did the rabbits hop all the way there, you know? So that's a big question that a lot of people have. What's the problem? I was born in Ararat in Australia, actually. Oh, was it a different Ararat then? Okay. Uh, yeah, now, okay, so what is the, the general answer? How could a kangaroo hop from Ararat to Australia and basically water ski at the same time, do you think? Yes, the issue here is that there are islands in between. But um, the Bible speaks about worldwide flood. And we know from studies that if there's a worldwide flood, we would expect an ice age, just one single ice age mm -hmm. that would start a few hundred years after the flood, peak about 500 years, and then goes down. And when you have an, when you have an ice age, um, the water level goes down in the sea. Right, because the waters are now on the continents in the form of ice. So it had to come from somewhere, and it came from the ocean. So the ocean is, yeah, locked down. It's logical. Yeah. And so when the ocean levels are lower, you have a land bridge that connects all the way from Asia to Australia. In well, fact, you have a land bridge that goes into North Americas as well. Right, I mean, evolutionists have proposed this to explain some of the uh, animal distribution, so why can't we do the same? Yeah, evolutionists do the same thing. So why is this only an issue for creationists mm. when the same explanation is used by evolutionists? Happens so often, doesn't it? It looks like Ice Age and the fossils should be separate podcasts as well. Now, okay, but in that case, how come there aren't any fossils of kangaroos in Ararat or in the Middle East? Well, I would say that the worldwide flood would actually provide the conditions to get fossils. Oh, yeah. So if the kangaroos only go there, will only get to Australia after the flood, we would not expect the fossil distribution mm. to be the same. Well, Australia, they are known for not only unique creatures, but for their marsupials. Mm -hmm. But marsupial animals are not only found in Australia, they're found in South America and some in North America, like, like the possum. But when you look at the fossil record, the distribution, we find that the marsupial fossils are in places where they are not living today. Well, yeah, because I I wrote a book called The Greatest Hoax on Earth, which is a response to Richard Dawkins' book called The Greatest Show on Earth, and one of the chapters is on the geographical distribution. And there's actually a quote here about how an evolutionist is really puzzled as, as to why the marsupial fossils are different from where they are now. And he said the switch remains unexplained. So you're trying to say that the places where we tend to find fossils, we don't find living marsupials. And where we find living marsupials, we don't yeah. find them and in the fossils. And that was a real puzzle to these evolutionist authors, you see. So it's not just something we've made up. The evolutionists have a problem with this. In fact, they have a bigger issue than us, I guess. And also the Bible talks about lions around Israel. Yes. Are, are there any lion fossils in Israel? No, they were extinct. Why also, just that? because something lived in an area doesn't mean it's going to leave fossils in the area. Ah, that's interesting. But... Why is it that Australia has more marsupials than, than most places in the world today? Well, I addressed this a little bit. I'm actually citing from John Woodmerappi's book called Studies in Flood Geology, and he thought that people may have brought marsupials because they are mostly nocturnal, so they're, they're not it's too much of a problem during the day, and also uh, they have dormant young inside their pouches. It may have been people selectively bringing the marsupials to Australia. It's interesting because um, evolutionists, they try to explain that and they claim that the reason why a lot of marsupials are extinct today was because they compete with pl placental mammals and the placental mammals kind of outcompete that. Well, that's possible. But then they also know that we had an article in our magazine about the thylacine, the marsupial wolf, and it seemed to be able to beat up the placental dogs quite easily. So... What's the evidence that they actually they did lose a battle in competition with placentals? I'm not so sure it's so clear cut. So the, the thylacine was still around like 100 years ago, but they're extinct today. Yeah. And but the when they were reason, so alive, they could handle the, 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 mass, the, the placental dogs quite well. Yeah, I think on our website, we have an article where actually account you know, tells about this story about how 
in one case where you have a dog confronting um, this tylosin, in one single bite, you actually <coughs> bit off a big chunk of, of the skull. You yeah, know. I wouldn't like to meet one of these things, to be honest. Yeah. Probably glad they're actually extinct. And I, I know evolutionists, sometimes they say, oh, the reason why we find marsupials in Australia and, and in um, South America was because the continents were once together and they slowly drift apart due to continental drift over millions of years. Why, why doesn't that explanation Well, I mean, work? it's interesting. Again, uh, this I, I covered in, in my book, chapter 10 of this book, and I got a lot of the information from our English colleague, Dominic Statham, who's written a lot about this topic, which is called biogeography, the distribution of living things around the globe, okay? And... There's, a f uh, there's something he's noted called disjunct distributions, which means what's, what's that? disjunct means you've got this population of identical things, but they're separated by, by oceans. So how do they get to be separated? And also, um, they, those things, according to evolutionary dating, evolved long after the continents split apart. So they cannot appeal to the split. They can't. So, so you, it would appeal if, in fact, they evolved before the split, but not if they evolved after the split. One. And that's a real a problem. It happens over and over again where it doesn't fit the expected distribution evolutionists would predict. Yeah, it's true. That's good. And also, when Darwin was talking about the, the distribution of animals, he assumed the continents hadn't moved. And so somehow his theory fit very well for a static uh, continent distribution, but now it works with a moving continent. So... It's a bit of a flexible, too flexible a theory if it works for both static and moving continents. <laughs> I think it's almost like it's um, an unfalsifiable theory, which makes you question whether it's real science. Yeah, that's true. That's interesting. So, Jono, mm -hmm. as I understand it, Richard Dawkins in his book, he presents the creationist view as if we do not believe there's any change whatsoever and that creatures are found today where they were once created. Well, that's interesting because Darwin also knocks down the same straw man, which is actually Lyell's view. Charles Lyell had the idea that there's fixity of species and also centers of creation. God created different species in the places where they now are, you see. So that's that, actually the evolutionary view he's attacking. Pretty them. much. It definitely is not the biblical creation view because a lot of their attacks can be refuted by understanding, yeah, we believe that things vary within the kind. We also believe there was migration after the flood, as you pointed out. While the Ice Age happened, while the land, land bridges, bridge, yeah. um, you had the separation. So that's why we find things which are similar in the Galapagos Islands to what they are on the mainland, because they migrated that way via South America to Galapagos. And that's why you find things like in Madagascar, which are similar to things in Africa, because they migrated after Ararat. So in fact, Darwin and Dawkins are knocking down a straw man here. So it's interesting because you have shown that the distribution of animals is consistent with what we expect with the Bible. Right. But it's actually an, a, a big issue for evolution. And it's also a big issue for the likes of Hugh Ross, who also believes in fixity of species and the same sort of view that Charles Lyell had that Darwin and Dawkins have demolished. Interesting. And yet they think that somehow we're the ones who make it hard to argue for the Bible. Yet they're the ones that Darwin has already demolished, not our view. It's a totally ironic thing. Wow. Yeah, so it's it just important. turns everything on its head. Yeah, this is why it's so important for us to understand the flood. As you have pointed out at the beginning, the flood is such an important thing for us to understand and migration paths after Ararat. If we don't understand that part of the biblical creation worldview, we haven't got a chance of, of dealing with Dawkins, Darwin, all, the, all those people. I was always thinking back in, in Australia and in New Zealand, where I also grew up, we have a huge problem with rabbits. Rabbits aren't native to Australia or New Zealand, but hang on, they, they came on a ship, landed in one place, but then they spread out all the way over the vast continent of Australia. So it certainly wasn't a case of one rabbit hopping from one side of Australia to the other, which is five hours by aeroplane. Clearly, it was over many generations that the rabbits spread out over Australia. Okay. So why wouldn't we say the same with the kangaroos and everything else coming out? Of course, we believe it happened over many generations, but just that they never left fossils because fossilization is so rare and needs something like a flood to explain. So, Jono, just to summarize what we have covered, yeah. we have explained that the animals after the flood started in Ararat and then over many generations, they get to Australia yeah. during the Ice Age when the sea level was much lower than what it is today. And we also discussed that when you look at the distribution of fossils out there, marsupial fossils, that is actually a huge issue for evolutionists. They can't really explain 
but it makes sense under the biblical creation migration model, creation flood migration model. Oh, by the way, one of the, the, the key books we have, which is one thing that almost every cre- creation should start with, is our Creation Answers book, which has 60 questions. There is actually one chapter here on how did animals get to Australia, and also a chapter on the Ice Age, which Joel discussed, also a chapter about what the flood would do, a f- chapter on continental drift, which you also yes. discussed. So quite a few of the things that we've been talking about are actually have more detail in this. But then it's my uh, more uh, technical book, The Greatest hoax on earth that had to be a bit more technical because I was refuting Richard Dawkins so I had to take him on on his own ground which discusses this in, in more detail so thanks very much for listening to us if you actually like it then please like it on YouTube and please share it on Facebook and other social media and be sure to tune in next time